Let me, on behalf of Elsevier, welcome everyone to our Flash Science Talks, this time focusing on how universities are contributing to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. My name is Anders Carlson from Elsevier's Global Strategic Networks team. And today we're very honored to be joined by Professor and Vice Executive Director at Okayama University, Mitsunobu Kano. He has had a highly important role in developing and leading the university's, I would say, successful SDG strategy. So, Professor Kano Mitsunobu-san, Mitsunobu, welcome. And could you introduce yourself, your role at Okayama University, and perhaps briefly mention about some of your other roles? Okay, thank you so much, um, Andash. Um, it's really an honored uh, chance for me to present myself uh, within the role uh, with the SDGs. So my background is um, starting my career as a clinician. And uh, at that time, I found that there are a lot of uh, issues still that is diseases uh, in, in my setting, but uh, um, which are not solved yet. And found that um, to solve it, um, we should be very challenging and also utilizing the science and technology as a method would be very powerful. And that is my starting point as a scientist. So my uh, switching of uh, career to scientist has been done by that motivation. And this explains a lot uh, why I'm so um, with the SDGs recently, because the SDGs are in my view um, the goals where people wish to overcome, which is somehow resembling to why we wish to overcome the diseases, because the diseases are really tough for us, and therefore we, need, we wish to overcome them. And also the goals in the SDGs are something like the people wish to overcome when they wish to how to say, um, uh, realize themselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are having hardness to realize ourselves by having some systems or rules or some circumstances. But if we could uh, um, overcome them, it would be finer for us to realize us. That's the uh, motivation for me to um, be with the SDGs. And therefore, um, as a professor, I'm still doing the research with the medicine um, to reveal why pancreatic cancer and other um, hard to treat diseases are still hard to treat. Mm -hmm. And also as the academia um, managing um, task as the uh, vice executive director, I'm uh, in charge of promoting the SDGs and also Within these way of thinking, I wish to be with the um, how we can determine the system to promote the science as a government or as a country. And from this point of view, I have been uh, um, contributing to the Japanese Academy, which is Science Council of Japan, and also has been appointed as a, a, a science and technology advisor to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Yeah. That's fantastic. I think this role you have is very important in the translation of the research. Thank you. Yeah, so in, in this respect with the SDGs, how do you see the specific role the universities play in accelerating the progress towards achieving the SDGs? Yeah, thank you so much um, for the question. Um, well, with the SDGs, an easiest way would be to labeling the SDGs numbers to what you are doing already. Of course, that's um, a, a great way to understand what's happening within the SDGs uh, system. However, if we looking back the original meaning of having the SDGs, which is to overcome the issues to prevent you to be realized, Mm. then um, we need to find out some new methods or new knowledge um, to overcome those issues. 
and to find out new things. Of course, we could be intuitive and test them, mm -hmm. but if we wish to be quite safely um, doing that, I mean, challenging new things, the science and technology way of thinking is really fantastic. Mm. Because science and technology, in my view, is to test whether a new idea could be true for everyone, not only for you. Because the data should be reproducible, which means that anyone can do the same thing. And therefore, um, the data itself could be true for others, not only for you. For example, if I may think of uh, praying to the heaven um, and bowing three times, and then if that's the way to overcome the issue, of course, that's nice. But it, it could be just only for you to, to overcome the, method, uh, uh, the, the issues. However, if you could uh, prove that your way or your new idea is true for others too, then that's more powerful to mm. all the human beings. So from this point of view, utilizing the science and technology or a way of thinking to do that, to overcome or be with the SDGs or uh, um, achieving the SDGs is really important in my view. Mm. So, so in that sense, the universities are the ideal ground to do this. Yes. Um, that's the halfway of what's, what, what university can do. The other role of the university is to educate the younger people or newer people. Mm -hmm. Education is uh, an act to make other people to think in a new way for them. And if you are able to bring them the way of thinking like scientists do, it's really great again, because people who can do this similar way of thinking and similar way of challenging the new things are now more if you can be successful to educate people. Yeah. And the university can do this too. This is my belief. So, so the different roles of the university is very good that you mentioned the educational aspects as well. So if I can ask a bit around Okayama University, I, I have visited it, I, I have seen the progress done and the work done. You were very early as a university in Japan to look at the SDGs. Can I ask a bit how internally between the research, how this, did this become a strategic choice for the university? Sure. Um, the original intention was to make more collaboration between disciplines inside the university. And I wished to ask why we needed to do so. Before, we had uh, been uh, discussing a lot about the importance of uh, interdisciplinarity or transdisciplinarity, but um, the kind of uh, discussion may well uh, sometimes lacking why we needed to do so. And if we think about the reason why we need them, the, the, the act of the interdisciplinarity, then that would be because we wish to overcome something. Mm. This is, uh, I think, the balance between kind of induction way of thinking and deductive way of thinking. Um, discipline may be rooted on the uh, deductive way of thinking where you have the theories or established thing, something um, beforehand, and then you may uh, 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 understand the some phenomena around you, whether or not fitting into that theory or not. But when you wish to be inductive, then originally you have a lot of events which are not known yet, how, how, how we can understand them, and then finding out some theory to, to explain them. And um, in, in the discipline, therefore, you may be very how to say, um, um, uh, ha having some dignity where you, you can say true or not. Mm. It's really easy. However, if you were an one outside the academic system, then you may 
having a lot of issues you wish to overcome rather than having some disciplines. Therefore, if you wish to bridge between the society around the university and inside the university, it is really important how you can balance between the inductive way of thinking and deductive way of thinking, in my view. Mm. And to having the SDGs is somehow to ask this balancing or rebalancing in between them. Mm. So in, from this point of view, of course, it is never so easy to promote the SDGs way of thinking inside the university. I, I cannot say it's still not, not um, cannot say it's still so successful <laughs> yet. Um, however, um, having the way of thinking to, to um, treat the events be around you as an, some, some important motivation to do research, mm -hmm. then um, the understanding from outside the university is now growing quite rapidly into a better way. Before, the society around the university might have been looking the university as something quite, um, uh, how to say, not connected to the society around. Yeah. However, with the way of thinking of uh, the SDGs recently, we have a lot of friends around the university who wish to be with us. Mm. And this is a really successful way of uh, changing, we feel now. Of course, um, to start some new initiative, which has not been so um, popular yet uh, in other universities, uh, really hard. But the one good motivation for us uh, when we started was to have the award from the government, yeah. which is um, praising the efforts towards the SDGs as a university. And we are still only a winner of uh, the award by the national universities in Japan. Mm. And this is really, um, happy for the university people have to, to have such a um, honor and mm. I think therefore having um, some awards to praise the efforts would be very important not only for universities but also for other sectors of the society. Yeah it's quite a recognition in many ways and, and um, inspiring for the researchers I, I, I would assume. Um, what, one thing which actually connects to that is that often one thinks that research is written for fellow researchers, but there's also this translation of the research, both to media as well as to inform policies. And of course, with SDGs, this comes to becoming extremely important because it's a lot about the interaction with the society. How do you see from your broad perspective, I should say, what, what are the key challenges on one hand and, and what, what are advice for success, if I may ask? in terms of communicating science. Sure, thank you so much. Well, um, as I told you before, um, to have uh, the people around the university as your friends, it should be really, how to say, um, related to what you, who are from outside of the university, may feel every day in everyday life. Um, I think the analogy with the medical setting is really powerful here again. Um, if you are a patient who are suffering from a very difficult disease, and therefore you may wish to have uh, some ways to overcome it, and who you wish to have some solution would not be the people from the normal medical setting because they do not know how to treat with that. Then the people from the some challenging field like universities. And the similar may happen around the SDGs, I think. And um, therefore, if you can put some question in front of your output, why you wish to prove this. And then if the question is somehow um, 
be able to be sympathetic with the people from outside the university, then the outcome would be understood more. Mm. If the question is quite a kind of professional, but not being able to be understood by the people from outside the university, then the communication may not happen much. Mm. The one um, difficulty with this way is that the people from outside the university may wish to have the solution quite rapidly. But as a one from uh, the academia, you may understand well that such a new solution may not be proven so rapidly. Mm. It may take sometimes years or decades sometimes. And therefore, um, it's not so easy to present a powerful solution to those who are suffering now so soon. Mm. But learning their um, difficulties or issues and try to connect your activities with that may be very important to bridge between the academia and normal societies, I think. Yeah. yeah I, I know you have quite extensive experience working in, in, on, on this part. So it's very good to hear those insights. Um, actually, we, we don't have too much, so much time for this discussion <laughs> in, in these interviews, but so I actually have just a, a, a final question in this sense. And, um, because you have been very active also in the uh, Young Academy, the Global Young Academy as well. W what would be your advice or something um, to inspire um, the, all young researchers who are basically the ones that will change the world, even though it may take some time, but they, they are the ones that, yeah, ba basically, we have to trust the young people in that sense. Can you give some advice uh, to young researchers? Thank you so much. I'm already a uh, middle-aged man who has been already graduated from uh, those activities. I wish to um, place a message for them. Um, uh, I recently uh, happily to use a analogy with the mythology um, uh, where uh, a scholar called uh, Joseph Campbell from the United States, uh, who inve uh, invested um, the more than 2,000 myths from around the world to find out some uh, shared structure in it, which is one of which is a hero's journey or adventure, where people are normally living in a world um, with a lot of known things, but sometimes someone may happen to notice that there's some unknown thing outside your world. And then you wish to um, go on to a trouble to seek for some unknown world. Of course, there are a lot of difficulties. And of course, in myths, it's, it's, it's possible that the person may die uh, between the valleys and somewhere else. However, if you are successful to bring back something to the known world from unknown world, then you are a hero. That is the uh, shared structure inside the myth, uh, according to that scholar. With the, this analogy, I wish to um, expect you to be a traveler into the new unknown world and to become a hero. You can do so by utilizing the scientific way of thinking. Because as I told you, science is the way to finding out better new ideas. Oh, fantastic. Um, yes, um, cannot agree more. So this has been a very inspiring discussion in many ways. And I would like to thank you for your time and also the inspiration to younger researchers, although both of us may not qualify uh, by the numbers uh, in that category, but I think both of us in our heart, we, we are still young and um, <laughs> yes. trying to find out new things constantly. So 
Thank you very much for, for your time for this in interview, Professor Carmen. Thank you too for uh, great questions. Thank you.